Jack Charlton grew up in Ashington in Northumberland. Just up the coast lies Warkworth Castle and its hermitage, a favourite place of his and his late mother's Sissy Charlton. We asked Jack to make this film before Sissy died. He filmed it just three weeks later. I love the northeast coast. Right from Newbiggin, right the way up as far as Berwick. It's totally different to anything you've ever seen. You never know what sort of weather you're going to get. They reckon that there's a storm in the North Sea every six days. And yet when you come out and you go up one of the river valleys, it's very calm, mainly because the wind goes straight over the top of you. This is the River Coquit. My memories of this place are many. I came here first of all when I was about five or six years of age with my mother, and she loved it here. Right until she died. She died about three weeks ago. I used to bring her along, put her in a chair, and bring her along the, the bank. And she just liked to sit and look at the river. And, uh, and probably the memories came flooding back to her on, on how she used to bring the lads here. Her lads. All four of them. We all we all know this river very, very well. But it's very, very quiet and very peaceful. And the sort of place that as a kid who never caused any mischief <laughs> could swim, plodge, do anything I wanted up here even poach a little bit, a bunch of worms in when nobody was looking, was acceptable to young lads, but not acceptable to senior people. We're going to the Hermitage. I've never been here. When I was a kid, and me and our kid used to come and we used to rope them down the river. We always thought there are ghosts in there or there are people that will chase you away. And this is the hermitage. I've never seen this before. You wouldn't believe that. I have never seen it before. This is what you should be frightened of. Who knows, when I get inside, I might be still be frightened of it. Fantastic in there. There's a chapel beautifully carved out of the stone, and the altar's there, and all of it. And then there's another room at the back of it, again beautifully carved. There was only one priest at a time lived here, and that was between 1312 and about 1512. And they used to be employed by the Percy family who lived in the castle at Walker to pray for them. We first visit here, and I'll tell you what, it's impressive. My mother always put herself out for us. They would bring us here, they would take us to Newbiggin, they would take us to Wamble. We never actually could afford to go on holidays to any great degree, but we could always have a day out. And during the holidays, this is where she would bring us. She would say, we're going on a mystery trip. And then we would finish up at Walkworth in the bus. And I should say, Mother, it's not a mystery this. She said, no, but you didn't know where we are coming before you left. I'm sure over the years, when you've lost somebody that you, you thought a great deal about, it will fade. But it won't fade for me. She will always be a memory for me every time I come to work with. We have some fantastic castles in Northumberland, but this has always been one of my favourites. It really is a Cinderella castle. When I was a kid, I used to like the fact that I could come here and you could wander around it, you could climb over it, you could go in and out the doors, you could imagine the way it used to be. You can't help but thinking about Walt Disney and what he considered a castle in the truly romantic sense. 
The castle was built in the 12th century, strangely enough, by one of the sons of a king of Scotland, which is unusual for it to be so far south as this. But it was then very quickly taken over by the Percy family, and they ran it throughout the rest of its history virtually. The keep at that end is where the Percy's used as a, a weekend retreat, really. They came here to entertain, and it was all apparently very, very formal. It disappointed me, that, actually, because I would have liked the thought there was a bit of debauchery went on as well. You might have heard of the Border Reavers. Well, they were just families, actually. The Armstrongs, the Nairies, the Charltons, the Milburns. And they controlled the whole of the Border region here. Very violent area. A lot of the Border Reavers, actually, when they were captured, would have been imprisoned here. In fact, we know there was one called Jerry Topping Charlton. Topping because he had... <laughs> a lot of hair sticking out the top of his head, was actually imprisoned here in one of the dungeons through there. In fact, all the names, Charlton, Robson, Milburn, have all played for England. <laughs> I want to think that I came from that stock. And maybe my competitive edge is where I got it from. Who knows? Charlton's have been around here a long time, as well as my mother's side of the family, the Milburns. And we are very proud of that. I will miss her very much. I'll miss her more as time goes by, I think. Mainly because wherever I go in the northeast of England, people will always say, we well, were sorry to hear about Sissy. So they remember her as well as I do. Jack Charlton in the Coquit Valley. Both Warkworth Castle and the Hermitage are open to the public. The castle's open every day and the Hermitage on Wednesdays and Sundays in summer. In next week's programme, Britain's most hidden heritage, inside Victorian prisons. The strange story of how Georgian houses can kill you. And Dame Thora Heard dances the night away at Britain's most glamorous hotel, the Midland at Morecambe. Until then, goodbye.